What happens if your e-bike motor breaks and you have no warranty? Will it be repairable? And how much will it cost? Now, one way to get your motor fixed is actually to send it to a motor repair specialist. We're at uh, e-bike motor center in the south of England, uh, but they actually have partners all over the world, from Chile to Australia, Germany, France, Italy, you name it. So you can actually get your motor fixed in many places worldwide. Uh, we're now joined by Pete Collard, who's actually the director of the e-bike motor center. And he's gonna take us through the process and the costs of how much it uh, takes to fix your motor once it's past warranty. Right. Pete, um, a motor might arrive with you. How might it arrive? Um, not normally as nice as this. <laughs> um, they'll normally arrive in a bin bag or a toolbox or um, a somebody's suitcase we had once. Are um, you serious? Wrapped in towels, <laughs> lovely. Um, but yeah, no, most, most of them come um, pretty well packed up. Okay. So it is quite odd because normally they, they wrap the motor to death and then when they get it back, they put it in their bike and throw it down the side of a mountain. But <laughs> they, they do travel well, they don't normally get okay. damaged. So as soon as we get the motor, we unpack it, we book it in, uh, take all the details, inform the customer that it's with us, um, and then we'll, we'll strip it down and find out what it needs and then see if the customer wants it repaired or not. Uh, so Pete, what uh, what kind of thing might you find in the box once you get it? <laughs> Sometimes it's been some horrific things. Uh, most people don't have any bubble wrap and things, so we end up uh, old t-shirts. We've had pajamas, pants, <laughs> towels. Um, we, we get quite a good range of clothing. Um, but also, obviously, as a motor, we, we, we normally get a muddy football or, or the box is full of water where the motor's been packed with water inside it. Um, so yeah, okay. some horrendous things we find in, inside the box. I think the next thing we need to talk about, could you maybe give us like three three examples, three scenarios of what sort of state of disrepair, neglect, and maybe different amounts of cost involved in fixing that motor? Yeah, if the, if the customer catches it early, um, then basically they, they'll just need a, a bearing normally, um, which is quite a cheap repair. Um, 50, 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, if they catch it a bit later then, and it's a bit of a mess in there, then we might end up having to do a full overhaul. Um, but the worst case scenario is obviously if they've left it too long or something's broken inside the motor, um, then we're obviously looking at a full overhaul plus. Right, Pete, should you have a look at each of those scenarios? Uh, I think maybe starting off with the simple bearing one could be a good point to start. Yeah. What have um, we got here? Normally, if, if people um, catch these early, we can just, just replace a bearing, for example, um, put it back together, happy days are on their way for, you know, um, 50, 60 pounds. Um, if they let it get kind of as bad as this, this is what we normally get. Yeah. What percentage, um, when you say normal, what was normal? Th this would be 80, 90%. Wow, really? Um, so once, once they get to this stage, um, then, then basically it's, it's game over. We know that when we open this motor up, it's going to be a right state inside. So my question to you is, so why, why would so someone's actually made the decision that the, the, the motor's out of warranty, um, they've made the decision that they, they know what they're doing, they're going to send this motor to you because they think it's just a simple bearing fix. Is that, would that be the case? Yeah. Um, sometimes they would be asking for a full overhaul, sometimes they'd be asking for a service repair. Um, and like I say, sometimes it's, it's, it's a mechanical failure and obviously the price is going to go on up from there. Yeah. So might people have possibly gone to a shop and asked their advice and said, you know, the shop might have said, well, actually, you need to send that to, to a proper repair centre. Would that be a, a reasonable... That, that's what normally happens, to be honest, yeah. Um, the, the, the shop will advise them to, to get it fixed or obviously buy a new one. Yeah, so I guess the advice to people is if you do find a little bit of play in your bearing uh, when it's out of warranty, get it down to e-bike motor center and they can fix it quite simply, right? To be honest, if you find play, it's too late. <laughs> you, need, you need to hear it first or feel it. Right, okay, how, how might you hear it or feel it then? Uh, honestly, the best possible thing anybody could ever do is just drop the chain off the front chain ring every now and again yeah. and wind the cranks forward and backwards. And if there's, there's a big difference in noise, mm -hmm. get, get used to what it feels like, what it sounds like, how free it is. Um, if that changes at all, then it, Do you know what, Pete? I think in. that's possibly the best bit of advice I've heard 
on EMBN in six years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Pete, I'm guessing the next thing we're going to talk about is, uh, is a motor overhaul. And I'm also guessing that a bit of moisture, a bit of water is going to be part of that story. Yeah. Um, I, mean, most, look, I mean, look at this. Most of the motors we, uh, we see kind of look like this and, and worse. <laughs> Uh, after, give us an idea of what, after what kind of mileage should, might you expect something like that to happen? 100,000? If your pressure washer <laughs> happy, um, then that's going to happen in, in 100, 150 miles. Whoa, seriously? Yeah. 150 miles, and that is devastation, right? Yeah, total. Um, just before we go into this, do you think, I mean, I mean, this kind of suggests to me that <clears throat> the design, maybe the ceiling isn't as good as it should be on an e-bike motor? Um, yeah, t technically the ceiling is more designed for road bikes than off-road bikes. It's, um, I think it's something that is slowly changing in the, in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but as it is at the moment, you kind of want to stay away from, definitely from the pressure washer and the hose. Right. Actually, Pete's giving me a bit of a sneak preview on the uh, Brose uh, third gen motor with some nice seals in it. But we'll talk about that at another stage. Um, okay, Pete, so you've got a bit of water, uh, full motor overhaul. What, what's involved in that exactly? Um, this, this one would be slightly beyond the full motor overhaul. Oh, right, Although okay. it could be fixed, but all is we would be using is the case. And, <laughs> and that looks like it's been to the bottom of a pond for six weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so if they are, if we can catch this fresh, if mm. it's still got the water in it and it hasn't had the oxygen to it, which makes them all pickle up, yeah, then we, then we can uh, clean them out, dry them off, treat, treat the electronics, mm -hmm. um, and then rebuild them in, with nice new shiny parts. Right. Cost for that? Um, a, a full overhaul is typically around 250 to 315 pounds. Wow, is that, yeah. that's, that's, uh, to me that's relatively inexpensive because you know, we look at some cassettes and derailers which are now you know, pushing five, six hundred pounds yeah. as for individual components. I'm thinking like you know, a fork or a shock um, service is 180 pounds after I think maybe 30 hours use. So yeah. I think that's relatively inexpensive for, for a motor. And you know, I think people, I think people do worry that, that motors aren't repairable. I think people worry about the kind of you know crazy costs of repairing motor. But that's actually that's not bad, is it? Not that we're suggesting you get to go and break your motor or abuse it. I think with you know a little bit of care, not too much pressure washing, yeah. which I do, all's good. Uh, okay, I reckon number three then is is catastrophic failure. You've got your uh, box of doom here. Um, I can see that you've got this circuit board, which is really interesting. Um, Pete, why why is there mud on the circuit board? <laughs> um, it's something we often see. It's normally been put in there by a pressure washer. I mean, mud on the circuit board yeah, inside the motor. Just blast it straight through the bearings into the motor. So just quickly then, I mean, your you got your bike behind you here, so. You say you've been riding your bike to work in the mud for two years. Why is there no mud on your circuit board? Uh, because this has been specially looked after by e-bike motor center. We've never, right. we, we took the motor apart when we got the bike. This is a Brose motor. It's a Brose motor. The one that everybody says fails because 90% of the failures are, are water ingress. Right, okay. Um, as, as, they are, as it is with all, all e-bike motors, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we wanted to prove that we could add a few seals and a bit of magic and stop that scenario. So we've been riding this one, like I say, off-road two, over two years. Um, crank still as free, as free and as quiet as anything. <laughs> wow, that's um, pretty impressive. So do, do you think, do you think, and just, just before we go into the catastrophic failure, do you think that the e-bike motors are getting more waterproof and, and more reliable? Very, very slowly, yes. Right. Yeah, I don't know about more reliable, they're definitely more okay. waterproof. Right, let's have a look at catastrophic failure then. What sort of scenario might we be looking at? I mean, I'm looking at this, this, this gear here. It's, it's absolutely, I can't believe how, how the motor goes to that state of disrepair. You can't believe that somebody keeps pedaling it when it's like that. <laughs> um, the noise coming from this motor was horrendous. I mean, absolutely. Horrendous. Yeah. Um, and when we stripped it down, the whole motor was full of iron filings. Um, <laughs> and the guy was just happily still pedaling along. Wow. Um, 
I mean, I mean, fair dues of the motor still working, but I guess there's all kinds of scenarios. But if if it does get to that stage, what what do you suggest to the customer at that point? Um, like I say, if if it looks like that and we've got the parts, then it's not a problem. Anything mechanical we can normally fix. Right. And the electronics we do struggle with a little bit. We've mm -hmm. got some good gear here, and we've got some good companies that work for us. Mm -hmm. um, but we do we do struggle. If the OEM would help us a bit more with the with yeah. the factory software, then maybe. So do you, so. What you're saying is you 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 actually rebuild the motor. Uh, but there possibly comes a time where you can't do that and you suggest maybe a, f a new motor to a, to a customer? Yeah. Uh, the, what we'll suggest is we'll, we'll, we'll offer them a, a part exchange basis mm -hmm. for a reconditioned motor. So we've got yeah. some motors here that we recondition and have on the shelf. Um, so that gives them an option, again, that's, that's cheaper than a new motor. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that can't afford a new motor, so, you know, there's their options. Yeah, and I think it's kind of it's not really acceptable to to be replacing complete motors after such a short space of time, is it really? No, it's very, it's very painful if you have to do that two or three times a year. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a few thousand pounds. Oh, nice, Pete. I see there's some rags here which have come in some of those boxes you get. <laughs> um, right, one one thing that's dawned on me, which I've been thinking about, is how do how do people know that it's actually the motor which is at fault and not such things as a lead or a display or a remote or things like that? Um, no, normally, obviously, it's a company with a big loud clanging and, and grinding noise, but if you haven't got that and you've just turned your bike on and you're not going anywhere, there's no assistance, then basically if your controller turns on, if you switch, switch it on and everything looks okay... There's no errors. There's no errors. Yeah. And your battery switches on, then it's going to be your motor. So, Pete, I guess, you know, some people will have, you know, great levels of technical knowledge. They'll know for sure they need to send the motor to you. Yeah. Other people might have gone to a shop, and I highly recommend if you've got no tech know-how, get to your shop, and they'll recommend that you go to a, such a place as e-bike motor center, which, as I mentioned earlier, there's partners worldwide. And I think, Pete, I think it's really reassuring that, you know, there's something, a place like this where you can go and, and get your motor fixed. We do get told that a lot. So, uh, a very rough summary of the kind of scenarios and the costs involved in repairing uh, your e-bike motor out of warranty. I think it's very reassuring. There's a great peace of mind to know that there's places such as the e-bike motor center worldwide to do this. Uh, one last thing is Pete and his team actually put your motor in the bike and they take it for a test drive before they send it back to you. Uh, that's it, thanks Pete. Uh, we've You're got welcome. a series of videos uh, on e-bike motors, e-bike motor repair coming up on the channel. Uh, any questions, please let, let me know in the questions down below and either myself or Pete might help you answer those. Thanks for joining us. Thanks Pete. Thank you.